Hi everyone, uh, welcome to another Table Talk. Uh, so, uh, based on some discussion that I've had back and forth uh, uh, recently with one of my new YouTube followers, uh, SR Gross, I think he told me his first name is Scott, so I, I hope I have that right, uh, Scott. But anyway, uh, I wanted to do a video uh, discussing some of the specifics on things you need to consider if you, uh, uh, why and then how to go about uh, downsizing uh, the, you know the, the things you need to uh, remember if you decide to downsize a park jet uh, so that you know as you're getting late uh, through the build you don't all of a sudden realize that you know something you have battery prop whatever's uh, not going to fit uh, so the uh, if you do want to downsize this it's a bit more of a uh, of an advanced kind of building but uh, you know it certainly can be done uh, without a whole lot of uh, difficulty, but there are some things definitely that you need to keep in mind so that you don't, uh, uh, you know, catch, get caught during the build or, or not have a good flight experience. Uh, so I, I will have a blog post posted down below that I wrote on uh, how I downsize or resize my park jet plans. Uh, many park jet plans, if you buy them, they are locked, so you can't send them uh, unless you have the password. You can't send them to uh, you know a commercial printer and say please print these at 85 percent or whatever uh, but there's a way around uh, doing that through your home printer so uh, uh, if you know if you want to do that please uh, read that blog post uh, down below um, okay so why would you want to downsize uh, a park jet <clears throat> well obviously there's several reasons uh, you know to suit your uh, your uh, life situation, uh, you know, maybe you don't have a whole lot of room to store planes. So if you can, if you can uh, make them a bit smaller, then you you have a few more planes in your hangar. Uh, smaller planes are easier to transport. Uh, they they tend to be faster, um, you know, faster versions than the full size uh, airplane. Um, a couple of reasons why I started to downsize. Uh, first of all, I, I, you know, if you've watched my videos, I, I do like to fly pretty fast. I know that, you know, some people don't like that, but that's that's who I am. That's what I do. Uh, the other thing is, since I started experimenting with uh, with quad racing motors, and I'll have a video link down below where I I did a uh, a wrap, kind of a wrap up video of uh, all the lessons that I learned. Uh, using uh, quad racing motors in my park jets. Um, one thing that I noticed early on is uh, these these little, this is a GEP RC 2306-2750 which is by far my favorite uh, quad racing motor. It's super powerful and you know makes my planes go uh, pretty darn fast but what I did notice is that if the plane got too heavy like let's say probably over up around 22 ounces or more or if the wingspan was uh, you know much more than maybe 27 28 inches the performance really started to degrade and that the you know because of the stator you know you look at these two motors this is the the 2212 2200 motor which is kind of the park jet workhorse uh, you know this this stator height is half of what this is so this this motor, although it you know in the right plane at the right weight and the right size, can really make it go fast. It doesn't have the same torque as this uh, motor does to to uh, handle the extra weight, the extra drag from uh, a wider uh, uh, wingspan, or if you know if you're flying trying to fly in windier conditions. But anyway, those are those are the lessons that I learned. So that's one of the main reasons why uh, I downs or the the two main reasons: speed and also. Uh, to accommodate um, best performance with quad racing motors. That's why I downsize my park jets. Okay, uh, so uh, basically there's, uh, there's well actually I guess there's three, three things that you need to consider uh, uh, before uh, downsizing too, uh, too much. Obviously a couple of them, um, you know, you have, depending on if you want to continue to spin, uh, you know, a six inch prop, I, this is uh, my modified RC Powers F-18 version 3. I built this at 85% uh, of stock, so I have a 25 and a half inch wingspan as opposed to a 30 inch wingspan. So um, one of the first things you want to look at is, you know, okay, figure out what size prop you want to spin that's, you know, optimal for the motor that you want to use. Uh, I downsized this specifically to use a 5 inch prop which is what I'm using here. I would not be able to spin a 6 inch prop uh, in this right now because the prop slot's not wide enough. Um, so the prop slot width, 
you know, you need to figure out uh, how small you can go and still accommodate the prop that you want to spin. Now, not this, just this measurement is important. The other thing you have to look at is the angle, uh, how these uh, bottom pieces here uh, angle in. Now, on this F-18, it wasn't too much of a problem. These are pretty much perpendicular to the wing plate. So I, I didn't uh, need to worry about that too much. Um, on this F-35 version 5, um, it's originally a 30 inch wingspan and I wanted to downsize it again to use a quad racing motor. And originally I thought, you know, I experimented, I thought I'd be able to spin a 6 inch prop. Uh, as you can see, originally I had cut out where this white foam is. I had originally cut out some relief so that it wouldn't interfere with my 6 inch prop, but it caused me uh, quite, quite a few issues. Uh, I'll have links to the, uh, my uh, uh, videos, discussion videos on both these planes, the F-18 and this F-35. I learned a lot with this F-35. So that caused, uh, you know, this was kind of the, the, uh, the sticking point here was how uh, wide this was. So I ended up having to obviously go down to a 5 inch prop. Now it flies really, really well. And I have done kind of a fly off between this plane and the F-18. This is actually still pretty fast, a pretty fast plane, but uh, uh, you know that the F-18 being a bit smaller, it's just a bit quicker. Now, eventually, I want to rebuild uh, an F-22 version five, uh, and you know put a five-inch prop in it. So again, these are re angled even more. These pieces here are angled even more on this plane than they are on the F-35. So that's going to be. Uh, something that I'm going to have to uh, really, really take into consideration so that I'm not uh, put, go to put my prop in there and it won't spin or without hitting the foam. So, yeah, so those are, so there's the prop slot. Uh, the other thing, the second uh, thing to consider, which is quite important, is uh, what size battery and components are you going to be using? Because as you downsize, your uh, battery compartment becomes quite a bit smaller. So, um, you know, first of all, you'll want to measure, like I, I didn't go buy a bunch of new batteries. I, I measured my uh, 2200 3S battery because these are the batteries I use about 90% of the time. And also my 4S batteries just to make sure width wise that I would be able to fit them in. Uh, the other thing you want to consider is depending on the profile of the plane, like this F35 has, you know, it's got a, a pretty low profile. Uh, you know, some like uh, T50s and stuff like that, they have a pretty low profile. So what you don't want to do is downsize it, you drop your battery in, and then when you go to close, you can't close your, uh, your electronics bay door. So you can, um, um, you know, you can uh, measure this on the full-size airplane and then uh, downsize uh, accordingly. The last thing, which is also very important, is you want to, you're going to really have to focus on keeping your plane as light as possible because as you downsize, uh, obviously if you use the same components, your wing loading is going to be higher uh, just because now you have a smaller wing but with the same amount of weight. And high wing load airplanes sometimes can, can uh, cause real issues because they normally they t you have to fly them faster. Uh, you can get to uh, run into problems where um, you know the plane is just not going to handle as well. So I always, I mean, I this is my standard build technique with any of my airplanes. But you can you can lighten up considerably by uh, I use uh, five gram nylon gear servos for my my uh, ailerons and my rudders. Uh, I still like to use nine gram servos for my elevons just because I like that extra bit of uh, confidence in the uh, torque and strength. But, you know, by using those 5 gram servos, uh, right off the bat, I, uh, you know, I lighten up my plane by, I think, close to an ounce, like, you know, 27, 28 grams in total. Um, you, you know, that, these are based on just the real-time measurements of my um, components. The other thing is, uh, you know, I, I, I shaved uh, a few grams off by, uh, t I took the plastic, um, case off of my receiver and I just have a uh, heat shrink on it. Uh, I'll have a link to a video down below I did on how I, I do that. It saves me space, <coughs> pardon me, inside the electronics bay and also saves me uh, a few grams. Yeah, so essentially prop slot size, uh, electronics bay compartment size, both in width and in depth, you know, are you going to be able to fit your components in there? 
and then also focusing on building uh, as light as possible uh, because you don't want to drive if you're using the same components um, and you know you downsize your plane by 15 percent your wing loading is going to go up considerably and it could really uh, impact how your uh, your plane flies okay so how do you how do you figure all this stuff out well if you haven't um, you know let's say you don't have the plans to the plane but you're considering you want to buy it and then downsize it uh, you know you can go on the forums uh, RC powers forum uh, or you know ask people on YouTube um, you know that have are flying it full time uh, you know ask them politely could you measure the you know the <coughs> pardon me the width of the prop slot or the width here uh, to determine whether it's going to uh, to fit the uh, prop that you want to use and also this uh, you know these these measurements here I've done that in the past uh, if you already have the plans uh, one thing that's really handy is just take the section uh, sections of the uh, tiled plans like for the prop slot and for the bottom and the sides of the fuselage print those off at hundred percent and measure those and then compare them you know compare those measurements to the size of the battery or whatever that you want to use and then you can you know doing some basic math and you can figure out uh, you know how small you can go like it, it might be a compromise if this is a really if it's a really low profile plane or something uh, the prop slot might not be the, you know, you may have to end up making it a little bit bigger so that you can still fit the battery in and, uh, and vice versa. So those are ways to do it. I, I, because I normally, most of the planes that I've downsized, I've already built them in full size before. So what I've normally done is I just, you know, like I said, take the tile plans. Okay, I need these sheets for the prop slot. I need these sheets for the, uh, where the battery's going to go. Uh, print those off, do some measurements, and then figure out, okay, I, you know, uh, that's what I did with this plane. I know I can uh, downsize by 15% and everything's uh, still going to fit. Um, so I do have had questions. The, no, your center of gravity uh, should not move, um, you know, even if you downsize it or upsize it. It should stay, you know, on the, on the wing. You know, normally most designers have the, the CG marked on the wing. So it should stay there uh, just like it would on the regular size plane. So don't don't worry about that too much. Uh, obviously flying is going to be a little bit different so let's say you've flown uh, the F-18 version 3 at full size with a 30 inch wingspan uh, you know it's a pretty docile plane and then all of a sudden you drop it down by 15 percent it's really going to be a completely different animal to fly so uh, those are things that you need to consider when you uh, when you get out to the field. Um, so I think that those are uh, uh, you know all the things that I wanted to cover hopefully uh, for Scott and uh, for others that has answered your questions uh, please as always don't hesitate to uh, post your comments or your questions down below if you need more help uh, I'll be more than willing to do what I can to help out and like I said please please uh, have a look at the uh, video description down below I'll have links to that blog post I mentioned and several other videos that you might find helpful so uh, thanks very much for watching and for your kind support to my channel Blue skies, calm winds to everyone, park jet noise, the other sound of freedom, baby. Take care.